Photosynthesis is the most basic phenomena. Just sit in the soil, your body will become so alive and agile. Hmm. In two years' time, you will be six to eight years younger. Sadhguruji, it is wonderful. Would it n not be possible to take this across the country? Across the world. It's a very complex marketplace there. The Lal Street <laughs> is beneath your feet. <laughs> Why am I sticking my life out? People should think. Because if you don't do it now, we will regret it so deeply. Sanjay, here we are. Uh, this is a small part of uh, our arecanut, coconut and uh, farm essentially. It's in Tamil, it's called Totam. So along with that, we are uh, now growing some pepper. Mm -hmm. Pepper is a very high yielding and high income kind of crop. We're bringing this to various farmers. This is more like a demo farm. If you just look around, people who have seen uh, like European and American farms will think, what is this farming? Why have you not cleaned it? Mm -hmm. There is no… nothing dirty out here. Everything yes. here is life, yes. whether it's a new leaf or a dry leaf. Mm -hmm. Above all, what's on the ground, all the life, which uh, people normally call as uh, weeds. <laughs> this is a tremendous amount of food for these trees. Nothing needs to be thrown out because everything that grows has life in it and it supports and sustains other life. You just have to manage it a little bit to <laughs> ensure what needs to come out of this. And above all, on the ground, the most important thing is the ground is not exposed to sun. Right. Photosynthesis must happen. Photosynthesis is the most basic phenomena which is responsible for all life on this planet. Mm -hmm. Essentially, photosynthesis means you are synthesizing the power of the sunlight. Right, right. So, this is a phenomena that is constantly generating this, it's capturing carbon from the atmosphere, making it to carbon sugars, passing it down, and from the soil, it is taking out all the other nutrients and letting out oxygen into the Thing. This whole process, mm -hmm. what the phenomena of photosynthesis is based, is uh, fundamentally responsible for the oxygen levels in the atmosphere today. At that time, they say a few billion, a billion years ago or something, the oxygen level was less than two percent. Today, it's around twenty-one percent. Two percent means you and me. No, we cannot. We cannot. <laughs> no. Okay, yes. only fish could live, yes. <laughs> probably, <laughs> but uh, we cannot exist. So this… today we are breathing oxygen here or anywhere mm. only because of this fundamental phenomena called photosynthesis. And this is one important thing that we need to learn about soil is, on every kind of soil, as much as possible, there must be maximum amount of photosynthesis happening. That means everything in the natural cycle is going well. So, uh, Sadhguruji, I'll put it in simple language, uh, like, are you saying, so photosynthesis happens from leaves. So, you're saying increase greenery. Is, is it as, as simple as that? As much as possible, the land should be covered. Hmm. Cover with what? Will you build a concrete building? <laughs> the only way you can cover it is with leaves, isn't it? Yeah. So, you're saying grass, you're saying leaves, you're Anything, saying plants, anything, shrub. grass, bushes, herbs, uh, trees, no matter what but it must be covered. And that's true, if you… just simply again speaking, because I… I th keep trying to simplify it for people like me, who understand it, say visually when you're driving somewhere and you see barren land, how… how dry, how… how almost sandy it looks, how harsh it looks, but you have something like this covered with trees and greenery and the whole pleasantness is something else. So, very simply, you can see the contrast. If you simply sit here with your eyes closed, you will see, you sit here for one or two hours and mm. just sit on the soil, meditate or simply sit. Ji, ji, ji. You will see that you will become… your body will become so alive and agile. If you do this every day, I will take a challenge that every day if you sit like this, let's say for two years, Hmm. In two years' time, you will be six to eight years younger than what you are today. Sadhguruji, I remember you said in one of your uh, uh, conversations that 
to heal yourself, just go and sit in your garden every day. Just sit on the ground, on the grass. Yes. Garden is… Uh, because they don't have anything else, I'm saying garden. Huh. Garden but is a meant... manicured garden usually, but it must be life like this, full of life. Oh, you mean… So like... if you are not able to sit like this, there may be small insects and you just throw a, 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 a little cloth, yes. cloth. Uh -huh. you know something that's enough natural material, either uh, cotton or silk or wool and you throw it there and you just sit on that, not on a rubber mat. Ah, huh. yes, because the energy is blocked with uh, synthetic materials, mm. but um, natural materials breathe and exchange energy. And uh, Sadhguruji, this is also what I… See, in, uh, in uh, conventional terms, people and would look at this and they think this farm is not well kept. Right, because they'll it say, is. oh, the leaves are here it. and… So, no, the choice is this. There yes. are two ways of managing the world. Hmm. There are two ways of managing yourself hmm. also. Hmm. Either you can be like a manicured garden or you can be like a forest. Hmm. If you have a manicured garden, three months if you don't attend to it, Gone. it will be ruined. <laughs> yes. A forest has been here for million years and there. And See, I'm like a forest. No. So no management, <laughs> self-managed. <laughs> <laughs> that would be not just three months. A few days you don't water yeah. your plants, they're gone. gone. They're so yes. dependent on that uh, feeding. So, so yes, this is the those... difference. You've taken out all the life and you're trying to ma make one kind of life survive all by itself. Hmm. That's not how life is made. Right. Life is made in such a way all these lives are connected including ours. Right. The more you remove yourself from that, the more distant you become from the life process, the more life problems you have, variety of problems. Are you saying… so is it something like that industrial farming, those pictures that we see of perfect farms looking just… They're not just perfect farms. I mean… Just that uh, they got perfect lines in it. Lines. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So is, is that what you're saying, that you're moving away from not natural only that, farming just, just where… Just the way people are living is… One thing is farming, another thing is the way we live, all right? Uh -huh. So how far away from the land are you? How have we built our cities? Is there any concern for having life around you? No. You think you can… You can exist in vacuum of life. No. The more you are connected with life, all kinds of life forms, the more alive they become. So what is a substitute people have found today? Because they're removed from all other life, suddenly they have fallen in love with dogs, all right? Uh. <laughs> because at least that one life keeps them little agile and okay. Right now in California, I was there in Los Angeles, just outside of Los Angeles. I saw an advertisement in the thing saying that they have cows. You can go and hug the cow. Yeah, 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 it cost uh, whatever, oh, some fifty yeah. dollars per hour. You can hug the cow. How's that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're just, yes, it's. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's how desperate it is to connect with life. So if you just sit in a place like this, your body becomes so alive and agile. You know, when you. Uh, I mean. I experience it very often when I move, come from, say, Mumbai city and have this travel to any, any part in the countryside. Mm. And when you just get off your car and you just look around, it's like as though uh, you just heave the sigh of relief from inside. So look at this, school of life. These seeds have been thrown so that these are very nitrogenous uh, kind of plants. So they have been thrown, they just grow and they multiply and they keep growing, keeping the soil very, very rich. And… and moist inside. Yes, of course. And… Um, moist? You talked about moisture. Yes. Just look at this. Yes, 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 yes. This and there's… and there's no rain happening no. these mm -hmm. days. It's just… it's so moist, it's so… my goodness. Yep. That's how soil should be. Yeah. The soil in the world is capable of holding eight times, that is eight hundred percent more water than all the rivers in the world put together. That's where water should be in the soil. But unfortunately, we've stored it in our tanks, that's a big mistake, or in our dams. Oh, what to be done? I mean, one is Kaveri calling, where you see, uh, said… See, Kaveri calling is happening wonderfully well. Mm -hmm. As you know, 125,000 farmers have converted to tree-based agriculture like this. Yes. See, it's not that he did not know, the previous generation knew. Yes. But 
everybody who is educated is telling them to do something different. So they started doing, now they've realized that land is becoming absolutely useless after some time. Mm. So now when we go and tell them, see there is a science like this, there is… it is not something that we are just telling you, here is the result and here are the farmers who have already benefited. Oh, yes. Now it is going on beautifully and the government also has supported as well. Now uh, Karnataka government saw the kind of development that's happening in these uh, nine districts of Kaveri Basin. Now they sent a letter of appreciation and also invited us to do all the thirty-one districts in Karnataka. Wow. <laughs> we, we have said yes and we will start from next year. On the, on the... I'm going to make a pause here because I have to say this. Mm -hmm. Just recently, like yesterday, met some of the farmers who have… Mm -hmm. who adopted. And it's so interesting to hear from them that at the beginning, they also hesitated, they resisted, they thought these volunteers are coming from nowhere trying to tell us what to do and it's not going to work and they didn't think it would. But today, in a few years, they've seen a dramatic change in their yield, in the quality, in… Uh, in their prosperity mm -hmm. on the… of the land. And I was amazed to hear how how the land and the trees that you grow on it uh, can actually be like your bank. Um, more than a bank, huh? More… Uh, like instant cash, uh, in you know, a way. Bank and is uh, subject to inflationary problems. But here it's <laughs> solid… It's not like that. It was like… Uh, like one little story was of the girl whose farm we went to, young girl, must be in her late twenties. She was trying to help her father because she's the only daughter. And uh, she said, all my life growing up, I'm seeing that we are, we are growing. They have a 10-acre farm. But they're growing bananas and turmeric and maybe something else. But she said, I was always insecure that suppose weather changes, something happens, there's a crisis, there's need for money. How will I manage? This is not going to sustain me. Uh, she mm -hmm. said when the volunteers came and told her that, you know, you can plant trees, uh, certain kinds, they go within, within your fields of the present mm -hmm. crop. And then in the beginning she said, I was like, uh, no, I don't think I want to try it, I don't want to take any risks, I have enough problems already. But then she did eventually listen because, <laughs> because the Isha volunteers were so persuasive and kind and have supported them. And then... When, when we went to her farm yesterday, Sadhguruji, it is wonderful, it is wonderful. And uh, she said, you know, if I ever need money, like she has grown 1200 trees on her 10 acre farm, which is more trees than I have on my little farm and size wise I have a bigger farm. But, but look at that, just the intelligence with which they did it and how they've done it. And she said, if there's ever a need for money, I simply, a few of them I have to cut, maybe a mahogany, teak, something, which are timber uh, trees and they are very valuable. And hey, if, sure if I you, am if secure. You plant, if you plant trees, still growing crops, if you plant trees smartly… Yes, smartly. I'm just saying, let's say per acre or per hectare what you plant, you're still cropping it. After twelve to fifteen years time, if you cut a few trees… Yeah, a few no, trees. No, I'll tell you, if hmm. you've cut a few trees, you will get more money than actually selling the land. Oh, definitely. You'll, you'll get oh. that much money and you'll still keep the land. Let's say this, wow. this land is worth one crop, <gasps> yes, you will yes. get much more than that and you still have the land. Yes. That is the beauty of it. Most farmers who get into loans are ending up selling the land. Yes. They never have to sell the land. If they just sell the trees, it will happen. Of course, uh, there are people who have never done anything in their life. You know, there are some perfect people in the country who never made any mistake because they have never done anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those people will say, oh, how can you cut the trees? Sadhguru is cutting the trees. Hey, it's… it's a poor farmer's land. Yeah, yeah. If he plants something, he must be able to benefit from that. Otherwise, how can you even ask him to plant trees? Because of the silly ways you live, how can you ask a poor farmer to plant trees to save the planet? Mm, yes. No, we are only… No, it benefits. This is an economic plan. Yes. But has significant ecological impact. That is what is significant about Kaveri calling. Fortunately, now the central government has made thirteen detailed project reports for thirteen rivers in the country. These thirteen rivers cover sixty-seven percent of India's land. 
Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they do this successfully, this is what I was going it to is come. a done thing. India is above the crest. This is what I wanted to say. I was coming to that, but my story became so long. <laughs> but there were so many such stories which were like this. They, have, you know, on trees, they put pepper, they intersperse their crop with trees and uh, fruits and and their yield, their, their income has actually grown twofold, threefold. And uh, I was just wondering that, you know, would it, would it not be possible to take this across the country? Across the world. Across the world, but first let's start with us. <laughs> no, when I say us, I mean the world. Okay, you are, <laughs> you are Sadhguruji and I'm only me who will say, it's here and… No, it and has to happen here, no question, because here sixty-five percent of the population is in farming. Yes. If it doesn't happen here, one of the first countries, other than the African nations, one of the first countries in India which will suffer yes. seriously if soil crisis really comes is India. Yes. Because our population and land uh, proportion is so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are a land of farmers first. So that is there, but the average land holding is just about a hectare, which is 2.25 acres per family or person, mm -hmm. that is a dangerous proposition. Mm -hmm. In the United States, it would be a few thousand acres probably. Yes, they have yeah. land like that. But this really enriches this this whole movement and the way uh, it's been thought through, Kaveri calling. I mean, one was, I was supporting it and I will continue now even more. It was first just numbers on a screen for me. Because it was like, okay, so many trees are going, they're being planted. But actually seeing it on the ground and meeting those farmers was so lifting. See, uh, this is something we must convey. People are thinking, if you say planting trees, they are thinking we are doing afforestation. Afforestation, if there is land, yes, it's good to do it. Mm -hmm. But there is really no extra land in the country. There is some degraded land which could be planted, but first of all, see right now we have taken up a Namanandi project. Namanandi means our Nandi. There's a Nandi hill in uh, near Bangalore where we are setting up a yoga center. So we have taken up this project. Here the forest department is offering us uh, probably around Bangalore, they are offering about three to seven thousand acres, I think. Some of the Bangalore corporate, big corporates are coming out to help us with that. So there we are fencing the land, putting up a watchman and doing a forestation. Right. But there are problems, villages are protesting, okay? So we are talking to them how alternately we can do… because they are herding their cattle there. So ah. if forest department fences it off… Then they don't have that they land don't have for the cattle. Cat. So we are seeing how to manage this, planting half of it and doing this and also planting grasses and other things so that they don't have to graze the whole land, half the land is good enough for them. Uh -huh. Once the trees grow, they can also graze here also. Right, right. Yeah. Because otherwise when yeah. they're small, the yeah, cattle come thing. and eat up the So I'm saying for happening. everything there is a solution. Hmm. If we have the necessary long-term commitment, that's all it takes. Unfortunately, most of the things that are happening are a one-day event. Some club will come and do it, some political leader's birthday, they will plant uh, this many lakhs of trees one day. Yes, 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 but you have to be with it for a while, see it grow, nurture it. Yeah, I'm also to... part of the Trillion Tree Campaign in the world, launched by the World Economic Forum. Uh, oh. So I'm part of it, I've personally, I've told them, see, if you are willing to give me the financial support mm -hmm. and the political connections in every country. Taking Africa and Asia together, I will personally take responsibility for hundred billion trees, billion. If money is there and uh, politically you facilitate a few things, I will have it done. We know how to do it, I'm saying. Only restriction, only stifling uh, aspect for us being a uh, you know, a non-profit organization is money. Financially, only what we have, we can do. Uh, so the idea of Kaveri calling you to set up a large enough uh, sample so that nobody can say it has not worked, yes. all right? It is yes. worked. Yes. So UNCCD feels that this is the top project right now in the tropical world. 
Wonderful. So, they have… they are our partners now in Safe Soil Movement, UNCCD is official partner now. And also WFP, the World Food Program also is with us. Now UNEP is with us, all UN agencies joining because of the success of Kaveri calling on the ground. It's not just talk, it's taken a whole lot of work. Yes. And the amount of resources the foundation has put in, the number of young people who are working on yes. it. Yes. It was a joy to meet the Nadi Viras yesterday. Again. Young, young people, professionals who just given up everything and. Oh, they didn't give up anything. I mean, they, they got back their life. Yeah. They were just trapped in some educational institution or some institution, no? Institution yeah, means think. either a prison <laughs> or an asylum usually. <laughs> yeah. Now, as in, on the out, you know, from the outside, the commercial world, you say, oh, you know, these kids, they would have been in some career, their colleagues have gone somewhere else, but these kids give it all away, put it aside. No, no, I'm coming to it, I'm coming to it, wait. So, and when I met them and like, I was like, yeah, so you, you've been here for two, three, four years, five years. And they said, this is the most beautiful thing we've done, uh, the most fulfilling thing we've done with our lives. Then what have we they given up? Or they got their <laughs> life back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, this is, in fact, for all of them it looked like this is it, this is life. Not outside now things seem shallow. Because... No, I don't want to make any judgments like that. Okay. All I'm saying is, this is one of the most needed things that needs to happen on the planet right now is to turn the soil around. Why I'm saying this is, on an average, the estimates say, on an average per year, about twenty-seven thousand species of microbes, algae, other aspects, uh, you know, fungi, algae, everything is going extinct. Extinct. Yes, you cannot revive no, that like that. So if you allow this to happen for another thirty to forty years, then you want to turn back the soil, it will take hundred and fifty to two hundred years. And what that's, do we do? That's like yeah. uh, human no, no, no. Uh, populations will go like, you know, they'll go for a toss, half the population may go with that. But today if we start the process, in another fifteen to twenty-five years, we can make a significant turnaround. But as I understand it from you, it's got to be done on a very large scale. See, you don't or think about the scale. Small. No, no, no. You, you should not think about the scale. What is needed is a policy change. See, now, for example, in Karnataka government, we brought about this policy change, uh, sustained efforts. In the time that we did, in seven and a half years, three governments changed. So every time you have to restart the whole thing. So in spite of that we went on and fortunately the previous government sanctioned this and now this government is continuing. So per tree, a farmer is getting 125 rupees subsidy for the tree That's based on the growth oh. over four years. It's not just given. <laughs> so year on year the growth has to be recorded. So it's geocoded and recorded. So because the growth is recorded, he gets the subsidy. If he doesn't record the growth, he won't get the subsidy. Oh. This is why I am asking for a policy change. If there is no policy, I do something, you do something, well, this is nice, the next generation may come and decide, uh, you know, de destroy the whole thing, underneath there is granite, let us mine it. No, yes. Don't say it's just that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I am saying agricultural land yes. needs policy if you want to keep the soil alive for future generations. Because soil is a living entity, it's not material. Unfortunately, Agricultural departments in India and almost everywhere in the world are talking about soil, it is like a chemical mix. Oh, it is nitrogen, phosphorus, this, that. Yes. <laughs> that is yes. not the thing, it is life. If you yes. keep it alive, you don't have to worry about nitrogen, phosphorus, nothing. All that is taken care of by them. Yes. It is not your intelligence which can do this. Right. It is the complexity of all of them working together. See, for example, you know this, yes. that even in our stomach, the food that we eat, yes. we are not capable of digesting it by ourselves. Hmm, not with you our brains eat, and saying, yeah. this, uh, this <laughs> enzyme, that the enzyme, now manufacture this, no. So, it is the gut bacteria it is which all does that. Yes. Sixty percent of your body is actually bacteria. Only forty percent are your parents. <laughs> yes. Only forty percent is genetic material, rest That's is all right. bacteria, That's all right? That's right, yes. Here also it is the same thing. This plant mm. cannot directly take nutrients from the soil. 
completely. Mm. To some extent it can, but the rest of it is all because of the bacteria, fungi, algae, other things working full time. Yeah. And they want carbon sugars, which the plant is always capturing from the atmosphere. Hmm. And this plant wants phosphorus, nitrogen, iron, copper, magnesium. Yes. So that they are providing. It's a very complex marketplace there. Suppose you take off all the leaf from this plant, all right? right. You take off all the leaf from a tree. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, there is no photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. So now this tree or plant cannot give carbon sugars to them. They will stop your nourishment. Right, right. They'll <laughs> they'll move out. They'll, they'll move out. They will move out to another <laughs> plant. So it is a hardcore marketplace. It's a dalal, <laughs> dalal street is beneath your feet. <laughs> um, so it is for everything on this. This is circle of life, as you yeah, say. Otherwise, it is not sustainable. Anything that's a straight line is not sustainable. Only if it's a circular, right. it's sustainable. Right, right. And we seem to be breaking that circle every now and again. But I don't. Know, maybe. <laughs> I'll start about education and then <laughs> Sadhguru will fire me. So, uh, hmm. but Sadhguruji, while you say soil, um, I'm one talking is, about soil as a living mechanism. Right. And farmers may be familiar with this whole thing because they are on this on the land. Uh, city people like me, they will be like, "What's Sadhguruji talking about? What's that?" Uh, because trees, you see trees, you understand and you, you know, you experience them, you sit in their shade, you, uh, you know, breathe oxygen from them. But when you just say, you are talking about soil, now be careful about how we're treating soil. How are they supposed to understand this? See, they don't have to treat the soil because they're moved to the city. They don't have much connection with the soil, it's their misfortune. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it to them, that's their choice. Mm -hmm. But. As a citizen in a democratic nation, mm -hmm. the most important aspect of your life for the well-being of all around you is your vote and your voice. Mm -hmm. When voting time comes, you don't vote. When you have to speak, you don't speak. Everywhere else you speak. Now all I'm saying is, every citizen in the world, for one hundred days, not for your last of your life, for one hundred days, from 21st of March, 9th, I mean 2022, you speak soil, use your social media, use your friends, use your phone. Anyway, endlessly you are on the phone, at least I'm saying for you also, Judy, from now on, till, till June, July mm. of this year, whatever message you write, close it, not with namaskaram, not with love, this, that this is safe soil, that's your love. Everybody. Hmm. Say, save soil for one hundred days. This means the governments and the… Po we are writing to all the okay. political parties. Every political party in the world, in hundred and ninety-two countries, our letters are going now personally being delivered to them and also to all the heads of state. So totally over uh, seven hundred plus letters are going around the world to all political parties and all governments, all right? Because we want Soil ecology to become a part of political manifestos. When you make your election manifesto, one of the important aspects should be soil ecology. If people don't speak, why will the government do it? Because they represent the people. People just want trinkets, people are asking for little, little things, government is throwing those things. If you say, if you commit to long-term well-being of this nation, particularly to soil because that's the basis of life, we are with you, people should say this, isn't it? So city people, this is all you have to do. Every one ah. of you have a smartphone which is smarter than you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> so use that smartphone uh -huh. and tell as many people as you can, this is our thing. We can't go and fix the soil. Let's move the policy. In a democratic country, the only value is… only currency is numbers. Please, hmm. you're one. So say it. You don't understand, it doesn't matter because this is the nature of democracy. Whether you have a full brain, half brain, no brain, you still have one vote. Please use it. Okay, so <laughs> I, I… so now I was asking something else, but this is what you would… it's almost like a call to action where you're saying, okay, yes. wherever you are, this is what you do. Yes, one hundred days, everybody Speak talk about it. soil. 
Yes, speak of it. Your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok or TikTok, whatever you got, <laughs> speak about it. Every day reach out to somebody and say, see, this is an issue, please do this. And close all your messages, mails, everything with safe soil. Okay. There is no more sacred duty for you now than this. And I'm telling you, forty percent less food we produce by 2045, such a thing happens. I hope we won't allow it to happen, but if it happens, I don't like to do doomsday production, I'm a very positive mm -hmm. kind of person, mm -hmm. but very easily you could kill anywhere between 1.5 to 2 billion people by 2045. 40% less food means… 22 and that's you? just 20. 40 percent less food means that's what will happen on the ground. And the suffering that happens to all the others who are living, that can never be estimated. See, we just forget, just in… Uh, uh, 40s and 50s, we have had terrible famines in this country, isn't right, it? Right, right, right. One Bengal famine took over three million people. Mm -hmm. We just forget, just because for 50 years we've eaten reasonably well. Mm -hmm. Even now, 820 million people go to bed without food in their stomach in the world. Farmer goes to his field without the necessary nutrition for him to go and do that work. A woman becomes pregnant and bears a child without the necessary nutrition to produce a new life. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. 820 will easily multiply into a couple of billion in no time. They're expecting that to happen within eight to ten years. And you're saying this is because of the deteriorating uh, they do one thing. state you, of… You look at the Google images of Thank Africa you. today. <laughs> Look at it ten years ago. Just oh. see how much advancement of desertification has happened. Sadhguruji… Because you are from Africa, I'm saying you <laughs> yes. it. No, you're right because I, we were flying over uh, Uganda and, and truly if you look for forest land, there was a lot of farmland but forest land, tree cover was… was you could see it only in little pockets and this is Africa, heart of <laughs> Africa where the land is so fertile. See, the, the 60s, 70s images of the Tarzan movies of Africa are gone, largely. Yes. Now, largely it's brown, Africa. So, I don't know. I, I, but it but can be fixed, that's an important thing. It can so, be. Yes, do we have the courage and commitment to do it or not is the only question as a generation of people. Yeah. This is a responsibility and it's also a great privilege that you could actually affect such a change mm -hmm. in this generation. Yeah. The next generation which is here cannot do that. Mm -hmm. We can do it because it's still within those limits. So will we use this as a privilege or will we shirk our responsibilities and be a vain generation which did not do what it was supposed to do? Okay, so one call to action is… Only one call. Only one call? Only one call. Okay, that's simple, straight, just do it, that's right. If the right. policy changes happen, <laughs> necessary incentives come, farmer will do that. You don't go and try to do that. Okay. <laughs> because in India, eighty-four percent of India's geography is right now farmland. Right. So this eighty-four percent, if you change, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Like I said, based on Kaveri calling, mm -hmm. now they made thirteen uh, detailed project reports. If you do this, India is above the crest. In the next fifteen years, if you implement this completely, then you don't have to worry in India. Yes, really from what I saw yesterday uh, on the farms, Even here, that the, the dramatic change, yes, and this is true. I mean, look at this. The, the possibility is is immense and… and See, now, so encouraging. For every, for every acre which is covered in green for mm. twelve months in the year, if government says, instead of saying, I'll give you free money if you vote for me, if you say, if you keep one acre of land green throughout the year, mm. with whatever you want, mm. okay? with whatever you want, mm -hmm. let's say we'll give you two thousand rupees, if I have ten acres, I'll get twenty thousand rupees. Mm -hmm. You will see every farmer will turn it green. That's all it takes. Why he's keeping it brown in summer? Because he don't, doesn't want to spend on the groundnut seed or maize or something else just to throw it.
to keep the land good, he thinks because somebody has told him, you don't have to do all this, just buy an extra bag of fertilizers, it'll work. Mm. This is just like saying, see, being Indians, mm. in the food, yeah. we add a little bit of salt mm. for the food that we eat. And uh, if that is not enough, we serve a little pickle on the side, mm. so that we manage the taste, you know. Mm. People don't know, even I, I see uh, when people, Western people are there, we serve pickle, they don't know what to do, they just eat it up. <laughs> they, <laughs> they don't know how to use it to enhance the taste of what you're eating at that moment, right? Right, right, so that, okay. So that, that is what fertilizer okay. should be. Just a little… Here and there. Touch here or yes. there. Yes, mm -hmm. where it's needed, you use it. Some land is deficient in something, little bit. But now you think, you can make a diet out of salt and pickle, just that only you eat for three days, see what'll happen to you. That's all that's happening to the land. That's a nice simple way to understand it. <laughs> that's a nice simple way. Yes. That fertilizer has to be just used that minimum degree. It's like vitamins. Yes. You can't be living on vitamins. You have them to just assist you in case there's a deficiency yes. somewhere. Because nobody can eat absolutely ideal food, we eat this and that here and there. Yes. So, just to take care, certain basic things are taken care of, maybe one pill you take. Now, no, they're taking a handful of pills, yes. fifty, sixty pills yes. per day. I met somebody hmm. who is in his fifties, but he's super fit, he's a… you know, he exercises and runs and cycles and does various things, very, very fit, like an athlete. But every day, sixty pills per meal. Eats the best, healthiest food, but still, because people have been promoting this. And at the end of the day, even those pills, they are chemicals. So See, somewhere they will no, no, create this, an imbalance this, this, inside or this talk side must, effects. No, this talk must stop about chemicals hmm. because even the soil, at one level, it's organisms. Another level, the trading is all of chemicals. Okay, organic chemicals, but chemicals. But if you ask me, all chemicals are organic because you have not brought anything from the moon or Mars. Everything is on the soil you've taken, so it's organic. It is but just the balance. The way... Yes, that's what I'm. We saying. go out of balance. <laughs> if, if you take this leaf and eat it, hmm. it has everything in it. Yeah. Your body will take what it wants. Sometimes something may not be sufficient. Hmm. But now, if you take that much of one particular mineral that overdose, what all problems it'll cause, you do not know. Yes. See, hmm. if something micronutrient is missing in your diet, right. for one day, it doesn't cause any damage. Hmm. If it is absent for long periods of time, it causes right. damage. Right. But the excess causes a different kind of damage. Hmm. And it also affects the soil because human excreta and urine is become a big problem in the United States in big cities. It's full of chemicals. Our bloodstream is full yes, of chemicals. That's what I'm saying, it is going into the soil. Sadhguruji, you are going to be uh, driving on a motor bike. Riding, riding. Riding on a motor bike, 30,000 kilometers. <laughs> what do you think I'll survive? Some 25 countries uh, to create awareness and to meet heads of states. And you know, bring this. Galvanize the people. Yes. On the social media and everything, we are planning to touch three to three point five billion people, which is sixty percent of the world's electorate. When we, when sixty percent of the world uh, world's electorate speaks, no political party or no government will ignore. Numbers are important in a democracy. So you want this to be a global movement? It is a global movement. It is a global. Yes. Because you can't attend to just your soil and think everything is fine, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Life is so very connected. It's an arduous journey, I mean 30,000 uh, kilometers is not a… is open. many days, many nights through difficult terrain. Yes. And uh, you're doing it alone, I mean if… It's a lone motorcycle but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that, uh, well, the time that we have chosen is such that it's still winter in Europe. In northern part of Europe, it's still snowing and icy roads. Icy roads!
So that's even more yeah. uh, slippery, so, dangerous. Skid and off then, road. Uh, and then we go into Arabia, where temperatures are at least 36 to 38 degrees in May. We are driving through the desert. Well, and then we enter India in June, monsoon time. <laughs> so I'll be soaked. So I'll have all the extremes of weather going with me. How did you think of this? I mean, what made you say this is okay? See, I want people to understand. See, for example, my life is such, I've done enough work. People are here to do everything now by themselves. We have set up large centers in United States. We have a very large center coming up. Literally every building is spiritual city. A few, you know, a few thousand square miles. Actually. What? Yes. A few thousand yeah. square miles? Yes, yes. We're building a whole spiritual city and we have a center here, there. See, it's beautiful, I can just live nicely, all right? All my life I've worked yes. twenty, twenty-one hours a day. I can just rest at sixty-five. I'm taking this trip for people to understand, why am I sticking my life out? People should think, because if you don't do it now, we will regret it so deeply. Regret is not going to change the world, action is going to change the world. How… okay, I know one call to action was talk, save soil. Is there any other way we can help you? Well, uh, we, uh, we are not doing any mass, uh, you know, fundraising or anything like that because Kaveri Calling is still in action. That needs mass fundraising. Mm -hmm. But uh, this needs fund if there are corporates and others who would like to brand themselves with this Safe Soil Movement or, you know, people, high net worth individuals want to brand themselves or they want to donate to this. We are only contacting them, we are not making a large scale appeal for funds. Because the fund, the rally route, everything, we are a small group of eight to ten people, we have funded the whole thing ourselves, including myself. We put our personal money into this to run the rally. But to get the message to 3.5 billion people, we need help. The entire rally is being run because of just eight to nine people. We all contributed from our money. Well, I just wish you great, great success. <laughs> Not for you, you're doing it for us. You're doing it for all of us. It's life. Yeah. Just for life. Life means every life. Actually, just, that's true, not just for people you're doing Human it for beings have forgotten that they are a consequence of the life that is throbbing in the soil right now. Mm -hmm. Not the other way around. Not because of us, they are there. Because of them, we are here. Even in the evolutionary scale, mm. it's only because of their activity, we are here. That's true. Yeah, we cannot do without greenery. A greenery can very well manage without us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's so make it happen, huh? Save soil, <laughs> let us make it happen, huh? Yes.